All right. Hello, everyone. I'm Chris Hines, Product Marketing Manager here at Docker. And today we're joined with David Yu, who's a solutions engineer at the company. Um, so before we kick things off, which I know has been delayed, um, I know there was an issue with the confirmation email going out, so I appreciate all of you guys being uh, flexible. But uh, this presentation is being recorded. So what we'll do is we'll follow up after this presentation and send out the recording to everyone uh, who has registered for this demo. Also, towards the end, we'll save about five minutes for Q&A, uh, so you can ask us any questions that you have throughout the presentation. Uh, you can just use the uh, portal here within WebEx. There's a little Q&A box where you can input your questions, and we'll try to get to as many as we can uh, towards the end. All right, so um, first, I want to kick things off by talking a little bit about who we are here at Docker, Inc. Um, so our goal here is to enable teams to build, ship, and run uh, their applications in any environment. Uh, we started off as an open source company in 2013, um, and earlier this year we transitioned into a hybrid company where we actually sell commercial solutions as well, uh, which is something that people are kind of just starting to learn about now. Um, and one of those solutions is Docker Data Center, and that's why we'll be uh, kind of showing you a demo and a walkthrough of how to actually leverage Docker Data Center within the enterprise. And what DDC is actually delivering is something called Containers as a Service, right? So this is a platform that's managed by IT operations teams and enables developers to actually go out and build applications in a self-service manner uh, while still maintaining the security that they need to uh, provide in order to meet things like industry compliance standards. So when you look at some of the key initiatives that are taking place within the enterprise today, uh, three really stand out. Right, and I'm sure a lot of you on this call are kind of looking at some of these and saying, hey, this is something that we're trying to adopt as well, right? So you have the whole move to cloud, right? And 80% of folks view Docker as uh, central to their cloud strategy, right? These are findings from a um, survey that we did earlier uh, this year called the State of Application Development Survey. Um, another finding was that microservices, right? So um, you think of microservices are these loosely coupled together applications that come together to really form an application in the end, um, about three out of four of our participants said that uh, it was one of their top initiatives around applications today, um, right? Taking monolithic applications and breaking them down into microservices applications. And then you have DevOps, which is really this cultural shift where you have um, kind of this breakdown of that barrier that takes place between, or that has taken place in the past between uh, developers and IT operations teams. So when you look at what Docker Data Center is doing, right, it's actually delivering agility, portability, and control for two key groups here, the developers and the IT operations teams. So on the developer side, they are looking for the agility, right, the ability to quickly create and deploy the applications fast. And on the IT operations team, they're trying to keep up with the changing business needs as well. Um, so when you look at the control aspect on the developer side, they need to not only define what that application needs to run, but if a bug arises, they need to go out and be able to fix that issue right away. And of course, on the IT operations team, one, their biggest role is to standardize and secure and, and manage their overall um, application environment. And then lastly is portability. Um, portability is perhaps one of the biggest reasons why teams have turned to Docker to begin with, right? The whole Docker containerization ability, right, where you're taking an application and everything that it needs to run and packaging it up in this standard unit, right, within this container, and then having that container being able to run in any environment um, based on the underlying Docker engine, which is really the thing that creates and runs the application, or the container itself. Um, and what that portability does is it provides this, we call it frictionless portability throughout different application environments and teams. So you think about something simple like the continuous integration and continuous deployment lifecycle, right, where you're going from development, test, and staging, and production, by having that standard unit, right, this container, we have, what we're able to do is actually have that container run the same exact way, regardless of environment, and what that does is streamline your overall uh, application deployment lifecycle. And that's what really brings us to Docker containers as a service. Uh, we call this CAS for short. Um, this is a platform that uh, is managed by the IT operations team, right, and enables them to actually go out and secure and manage their environment, and that's both from an infrastructure as well as content standpoint. But at the same time, what it's allowing your developers to do is actually select from um, 
pre pre qualified content, right? Think of like a pool of content that they can then pull from and then build off of as well to actually go out and create new applications. All right, and that's really what Docker Data Center is providing. So uh, this is the workflow. When you look at kind of the build, ship, run workflow that uh, we provide here at Docker, uh, you have the developers who are going out and leveraging the Docker tools to actually go out and build applications. We'll think about tools like uh, Docker for Mac or Docker for Windows, which are native installation of Docker within a Mac device or a Windows device. What that enables teams to do is to get started with Docker super quickly, right? So your developers can go out and, and build applications, uh, build an image, which is essentially a snapshot of an application, right? And that image is a static thing that needs to be stored somewhere, and you store it in something called a registry, right? And in the case of Docker Data Center, we have Docker Trusted Registry, which is where you can actually store and secure your image content you know, there's some cool security features in there, you might have heard of like um, Docker Content Trust, where you can actually sign images and ensure that you're running the latest version of an image in production. Um, we're coming out with this, the scanning capability as well. We can actually scan images on push and actually scan the different layers within an image for certain vulnerabilities. And we actually connect with uh, something called the CVE database, which is um, a database for known vulnerabilities. Right, so once you have this secured image, um, once you're leveraging this high integrity content, you can then pull it and run it in production using our management layer of Docker Data Center, which is Universal Control Plane. Um, and, and the cool thing about that is you can actually, you can manage your applications, you can deploy them, you can run them across any um, host, right, and, and kind of um, push these containers throughout your different, um, your, your Dockerized cluster, right, so the orchestration layer there. Um, and it's not, you know, limited to only cloud or data center um, infrastructure, right? You can run it wherever you'd like and actually have full portability between your cloud service providers and your uh, data center providers as well. So when you look at the actual platform itself, uh, this is a quick snapshot of it, all right? This is the Docker data center on-premises platform. This is what uh, David will be walking you through in a demo shortly. Um, so you have the actual Docker engine, Right, so this is the really the heart of it all. It's the container runtime, right? It's the thing that actually the software that installs on a host, and that host can be you know, a public cloud provider, it could be um, a virtual machine, or it could be a physical bare metal server as well. Right, um, with 112, which you might have heard of as built-in orchestration. Right, so we have our swarm clustering tool, which is basically a tool that takes multiple Docker engines and treats it as kind of one virtual engine that you can kind of manage, right? Um, that's been built directly into the Docker engine itself now. And there's also some plugins as well, networking volumes in addition to that. Um, also as part of this platform, you're getting Docker trusted registry, right? So you have a registry that is on premises um, and it enables you to store and secure image content. We talked about some of the security features within that already with Docker content trust and Docker security scanning. And then you have the management layer, right? This is um, how you actually go out and orchestrate and manage and deploy your applications at scale um, for your entire Dockerized environment, right? We realize that as enterprise teams, um, you already have existing infrastructure. Our goal is not to ask you to strip it out, but instead we've built this platform to be super pluggable. So you can plug into your existing infrastructure. Um, you know, it has plugins with things like CI, CD, so, you know, Jenkins or Puppet or Chef, whatever you're using there. Uh, whatever your developers are using there, right? Um, networking plugins with companies like Cisco, uh, volumes, monitoring, logging. You know, we have relationships with companies like Splunk as well and plugins with Splunk. So it gives you an idea as to kind of what that platform looks like um, um, and kind of what's involved and what you're getting as part of Docker Data Center. Um, so quick hit on some of the key stats that we've pulled so far uh, based on folks who have adopted Docker and Docker Data Center. Uh, we talked about agility portability control before, um, but folks have actually used Docker Data Center. I've seen that able to deploy in terms of agility 13 times more often and have also reduced uh, mean time to remediation by 62% as well, right? So they're able to solve issues faster. From a portability standpoint, 41% are using Docker containers to actually move their workloads across their different environments, right? So like I mentioned before, you have full portability with Docker containers. You can move it from any environment that you'd like, whether that's from you know, Azure down to OpenStack or Azure over to AWS, right? Without having to recode anything. 
And because of that, it eliminates this whole, um, if you might have heard of this, the whole works on my machine issue, where you, know, you have a, an application running on someone's machine, it works perfectly fine, but then they push it over to test or to staging or to production and something breaks, right? With using Docker and its portability, you're actually able to solve for those issues as well. And lastly, from a control standpoint, um, folks have used, who use Docker have actually been able to better utilize their resources by 20x. So you think about Docker's and the container's ability to actually run within a VM. You can then leverage less VMs and spend less maintaining those VMs and um, spend less on hypervisor licensing costs as well. Um, another stat there is that 44% of teams have seen a reduction in the number of VMs by greater than 25%, right? So a lot of cost savings and infrastructure optimization that's going on as part of that. Um, just a list of a few customers here. I won't walk through these in, in too much depth, but um, just folks who have benefited from using Docker Data Center already and using it in production. Uh, ADP, right, they uh, are leveraging our secure modern platform for DevOps and microservices. What they actually started to do was containerize their legacy applications and then slowly break them down into microservices as they see fit. Merck is also looking to move from a monolithic based platform and breaking down those applications into microservices. And then you have PayPal is looking to modernize their actual, their legacy apps that include things like Java and their C++ legacy applications as Docker containers. And they're also leveraging about 100,000 VMs today and they're looking to benefit from the infrastructure the optimization aspect of being able to run containers uh, within virtual machines today. And with that being said, I will push it over to David to uh, walk you through the demo. So give us one sec. I'll stop sharing here and I will let David take it away. And David, just so you know, I think you're on mute. Hey guys, this is David, sorry about that. I was definitely on mute. Um, so thanks for joining and, and, and thanks Chris for that excellent overview of, of Docker Data Center. Um, and in and, and this part of the presentation, what I want to do is kind of walk you through uh, how to use Docker Data Center in practice. And I'll, I'll do that through a number of different ways. Uh, one, I'll actually show you a live application that you can actually run inside of Docker Data Center. And uh, to help with that, I'm going to actually follow uh, the service discovery and load balancing reference architecture. Uh, we'll, we'll reference that inside of the, some of the, the, uh, the browser slides. And uh, what I'll also do is kind of walk you through the, the interface for, for Docker Data Center and uh, walk you through how to actually use it. So uh, just to kind of walk and go, go through the, the product first, we're going to go and, and look at the, in the high level overview of Docker Data Center, which comprises of two different components. Uh, the first component is called the Universal Control Plane. And this is where actually you would go ahead and, and manage the, the applications that are running as containers inside of your Docker Swarm. Uh, so this is the, the, first, the first view that you see of my, my actual Swarm that's running uh, right now, as you can see. Uh, it's running in five different nodes. Uh, these are actually five VMs that are running what what are called Docker engines, and, and as Chris had talked about, the the Docker engine we're using right now is a Docker certified, uh, commercially supported engine, and uh, you can see that it's running uh, on five different nodes. And what we've done is we've actually added each node uh, using a simple command uh, that allows me to join that swarm uh, with a fingerprint and uh, you know some of the options that allow you to actually talk to the master controller. Uh, so this will basically allow you to create your infrastructure, and what you'll do is over time you'll start to build applications that actually need to be scheduled uh, onto the actual nodes. And there's a couple ways to do this. Uh, you, you will actually use uh, either the UI. Uh, this is the this is usually used for demo purposes where you actually type in, um, you know, an example application uh, just to show uh, how this would work in practice. Um, and, and the other option would be to actually run this uh, authenticate directly to the swarm uh, using what's called a, uh, uh, a bundle. So we have a, what's called a user bundle that you can download and uh, you would go ahead and just run a regular Docker Compose command or Docker Run command and that would actually communicate directly to the swarm. 
And so what's happening here right now is I'm actually going ahead and running an application uh, on the actual universal control plane. And it's pulling images uh, right now from Docker Hub, and it's going to create containers based off those images inside of my swarm. Uh, after that is finished, uh, we can then go ahead and inspect the actual containers that are running inside the application. And we can see the logs, you can see uh, the actual metadata that's tied to that container. And that will help us understand what's happening underneath the hood uh, as the application is running live. Now, while this is going on, I'm going to show you another component of the Docker uh, data center called Docker Trusted Registry. And this is this is a piece where people uh, usually start to see some of their needs uh, from more of the more than just the open source uh, engine, uh, where they need to actually start to do other more interesting things. Um, and the first interesting thing that they probably need to solve is how do I actually store those images that I'm building in my application? And so what Docker Trusted Registry provides is it's basically a on-premise uh, instance of, of almost Docker Hub, if you will, um, and it has a lot more knobs that you can use to help you securely authenticate and securely manage uh, the registry inside your own environment. Uh, this is the settings page, so this is kind of where we can talk about some of those key features. Uh, we can definitely look at, you know, uh, how you can actually manage authentication, you manage um, uh, encryption of the, of the actual traffic to the, the actual uh, trusted registry. But aside from that, uh, we've actually incorporated what's called uh, image signing, where we can then uh, take a specific image and bless it uh, to be run inside of a, a uh, an engine, right? And so the essential pr best practice is uh, if you don't have a signed, in, signed image and you're running it on an engine, uh, you don't know if that, that image has actually been authorized uh, by a specific party to, uh, to, be, to be run. It could be anyone that actually created an image. So uh, you want to make sure that it's first signed. And we use a, 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 a technology that we built called Notary that allows you to sign those images and allows you to keep track of those images uh, against our trusted registry. Uh, the other cool things we, we built into trust and registry. So some of the things that you you typically have to deal with when you're running your own your own registry include you know how do you handle storage? Uh, where do you actually store those images? Uh, how would you authenticate to uh, backend uh, uh, authorization system like LDAP or Active Directory? And then we have a, a feature that helps you manage uh, the actual images themselves as they start to be deleted from the repository called garbage collection, and this is where you can start to save um, storage because we'll actually delete layers of images as opposed to actually just deleting uh, references to layers of images, uh, which is typically done uh, in most registries. Uh, this is an actual overview of the, the repos, uh, some of them which I'll, I'll kind of walk through um, uh, as part of the demo, but this is kind of where you would go ahead and, and download the, the actual images or push the actual images. Uh, onto the registry, and typically what happens is uh, you create what's called a organization, and in that organization, uh, you can actually sign repositories, uh, and you can even break this organization down into multiple teams, so that only certain teams have access to that repository. So we've talked about the the actual um, trusted registry, uh, and I'm going to go and show you real quickly the. The simple app that I've deployed, um, you guys probably know, know and love WordPress, a um, uh, simple PHP app. It's talking to uh, MariaDB, which is a, uh, a variant of MySQL. And what I can see here is there's two containers running on uh, one of my nodes. And uh, if I click on this, uh, I can actually see the contents of this container. I can see, you know, the configuration, how it's actually running. Well, the entry point, um, if I assign resources or specify that this container can only use so many resources, I can see that here. Um, this is running on one of my nodes that has about 2.5 gigs of memory. And uh, if I keep going down, um, I'll eventually find the actual uh, IP address and port that this specific app is running on. And I can go directly to it. And there you go. I've got my containers as a service. Uh, use case just met because now I've scheduled the WordPress app as a container and, and my Swarm cluster then go ahead and went ahead and scheduled that. 
So now let's talk about uh, something a little bit more complicated. Um, I'm going to leave the other uh, parts of um, uh, UZP uh, kind of left to you guys for an exercise, but we're going to walk through uh, a more complicated example of using uh, Docker Data Center. And, and this is around what's called the, the reference architecture. Um, so some of you that have started to use Docker um, probably have uh, many questions about you know, what happens when we start to use containers at scale? Uh, we want to deploy applications and also run those applications as multiple containers across multiple nodes. And how do we do and balance uh, on the applications uh, using a specific domain name? So I want to show you real quickly um, a diagram uh, just to actually show you what we're going we're gonna to go ahead and do. So this is uh, this is basically uh, Docker Data Center right here at the very top. So this is, uh, you guys can kind of ignore that for now. Uh, this is the infrastructure that allows us to run our application. And then this here at the bottom is, is somebody actually logging into uh, a, a web app. And that web app is fronted by a load balancer. In this case, it's going to be a software load balancer. And we're going to configure it using a, a Docker plugin called Interlock. Uh, which is what the <coughs> preferred way to uh, actually detect uh, new containers and, and old containers that are being killed and reconfigure uh, your load balancer on the fly. So essentially this, this node here is then going to listen to the Docker swarm and it's going to listen to all the containers that are running on that swarm and uh, as new, new applications pop up, uh, this interlock container will then reconfigure Nginx or HA proxy in the fly. And if somebody hits that, the actual application, uh, the, the, the request will then be load balanced across the multiple nodes that we have. And so to give you an even better, more clear idea of how this would work, um, I'm going to show you real quickly. This is, the, uh, this is the web app right here that I'm going to work with. And it, as you can see, I'm, I'm refreshing this. Uh, this is a, a domain called test.local. Uh, it's got, uh, right now it's got five web app containers that are, are backing this. And the, the uh, requests are being load balanced uh, across, um, yeah, so I can go ahead and create an account. Um, and the requests are being load balanced across five different containers as the data center. So let's go ahead and sign up. And you can see every time I go to a different screen, uh, you can see the actual, <clears throat> uh, this is a container ID in parentheses, so you can see the actual container ID change, right? Um, and then uh, just to give you um, some more background, um, the, the application right now is running on Docker Data Center in this, this interface uh, called Docker Node App. And uh, what I'm doing here is I'm basically uh, scaling my application to multiple containers. And then I also have a specific um, database container called MongoDB. And, and that's basically where um, you can see each container will be running on a specific node and it also has its own um, ports. And this is where, um, you know, we're load balancing across those different, different nodes. Uh, let me show you, uh, if you guys are not familiar with Docker and how you would go about doing this, um, even before you uh, you do something like service discovery and load balancing. Let me show you uh, real quickly uh, what you would do to create such an application. So typically, uh, when you're using Docker, uh, the first thing you would probably do is, is, is create what's called a Docker file. And in that Docker file, uh, this is actually the, the manifest, if you will, that defines the, the way that the image is created. So this is where you would define, okay, so what is the, the actual, um, the binaries that I need to actually use in the, in the container? And then how do I initialize that container so I can run? Uh, I'm using Node.js as my language, uh, so I'm just copying some JavaScript and running npm install to install some libraries, and then finally I'm using uh, the node command to actually run the application. Uh, so a very simple example. Um, this, this Docker file is going to help me create uh, what's called uh, a image, and uh, the image that I'm creating here is called uh, Docker node app, right? And, and inside of my compose file, now compile, the compose is a way you can actually start to, to bring up uh, sets of images together. 
and then also configure them as a solution. So uh, in this case, I have my application here at the top, and then I have my database at the bottom, right? So what I'm doing is I'm defining that I'm going to be pulling this image from DTR uh, for this specific image, and I'm going to go ahead and define some environment variables. <clears throat> Um, and this is this is probably more than what you guys would typically um, do on a first try. But uh, what I'm what I'm also doing is I'm explaining that uh, this specific application uh, image should only run on let's call it a constraint. Uh, if a node has a key value pair assigned to it and the key is node type and the value is app, then I'm going to run this container on that node. Node is a basically a, a server that's running an engine. Um, interlock is basically going to look for uh, these labels on, on any container, and uh, this is how we can tell interlock that this is the application that we're running on this specific domain and host. Uh, I actually connected this, this application then to some networks. Uh, so networks allows us to, to talk to um, uh, containers across this form. Uh, in this case, I'm using overlay networks, which is it was just the uh, what you would use to do in a, uh, use to communicate across a multi-host configuration, and uh, we're talking um, using these these networks, front-end network and back-end network, um, to basically talk to uh, the containers within themselves. And so, what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to show you how to actually uh, get this up and running, um, and I'm going to use a um, a, uh, a, a tool called Jenkins. Uh, if you guys are doing CI/CD today. Uh, this is probably the de facto standard for doing that on on-premise. Um, there's other uh, SaaS versions of that. And I'm going to actually break this down to two steps. Uh, the first part is actually building the image and pushing it to DTR. Um, and then the second part is then deploying it as a new version of the application. And so um, my my just to give you some more detail here. Uh, this is where I'm actually going to start to push my code changes. My Jenkins server will listen to this GitHub repository. Uh, it's going to go ahead and put, I'm going to go ahead and push changes to this specific repository. Uh, Jenkins will then listen to it, uh, and then it'll pick it up, and then it'll go ahead and build uh, the, the image. And then inside uh, Docker Trusted Registry, uh, we should then uh, receive the image uh, in the Trusted Registry. Uh, we're also going to sign the image, uh, so uh, we're going to enable Docker Content Trust, and we're going to sign it and then push it to uh, the registry so that only uh, when it, only uh, Docker Content Trust enabled engines can run that specific image. And then uh, what's, what's going to happen next is we're going to pull the image from Docker Trust and registry and finally run it inside of UCP. And so that's kind of the uh, the scenario that we're going to show you real quick. Cool. Uh, so let's go back to the application, and I'm going to go inside of the. Uh, this is a very simple change. Uh, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say <coughs> uh, I'm going to change just just a, a layout file, if you will, of this application from Docker Data Center to uh, Docker Webinar, right? So I've got a change there, and what I'll do next is I'll go inside of my uh, terminal, and I'm going to go ahead and commit change for webinar, and then push this to uh, uh, push this to GitHub, right? So uh, latest commit should probably have come in, um, so I have <coughs> that right here, um, and then what I'll do then is look at uh, Jenkins and, and and now what's going to happen is this uh, the Jenkins job will then listen to GitHub. Um, you can actually configure it as a webhook, uh, but I'm, right now I'm just kind of pulling the the actual uh, repository. And then what it's going to do is it's going to go in and kick off an actual build um, of that specific code. So uh, just kind of walk you through this. Um, first, we're going to actually clone the repo uh, and then. We're going to run um, Docker Docker build uh, using the Docker command line client, and uh, what's going to happen is <clears throat> we're going to push um, the image to the repository, 
And uh, because we've enabled Docker Content Trust, it's going to sign the actual image. Uh, the latest image that um, there's two different tags that we're going to use. Uh, one is called latest, and the other one is called uh, 1.10, which is the current version of uh, the application that we're going to be pushing. Uh, so if I go back to Trusted Registry, uh, you saw that 1.10 does not exist. Uh, refresh this guy. Uh, you should see uh, the new image then shown up here. Uh, and this is the actual image that's running. And then um, this, this tag is also um, replaced uh, with a new image uh, for that new build that we just created. Cool, uh, so that was the first part. Now the second part is then actually taking that image and then running uh, running that inside of uh, Universal Control Plane. Uh, so what we're gonna do is, um, <clears throat> and this is part of the, if you guys have actually used um, Docker Data Center, um, if you ever actually go to your profile and you download what's called a client bundle, uh, the client bundle actually has um, in there, uh, it has, what's called um, certificates that allow you to authenticate directly to um, the actual client, if you will. And uh, the other thing it has is um, a script that you will source uh, that will help you just authenticate directly via command line. And so uh, the contents of this, this guy here is basically the contents of that script. So I'm gonna authenticate directly to uh, my UCP Swarm Master, which is one, uh, this IP address. And then this is my uh, environment variable for my Docker Trusted Registry, um, which is used by the Compose file. Now, uh, what we're gonna do then is, is we're actually gonna stop the, the existing um, applications and then uh, we're gonna go and pull the latest versions of the image that we just built. And then we're gonna go ahead and bring it back up again uh, using Docker Compose. And as you can see here, um, the next step we did after we did that was we actually scaled uh, the application to five containers. And so uh, the, the new version of the application should now be up and running. Uh, we should have uh, the actual containers here with the database listed there. Um, and I should be able to go back to uh, test on local. And then I can see the actual change inside the application. Um, as I actually go ahead and move around, um, right, um, if I go ahead and continue to make changes, you'll notice the, the actual requests again are still a little bounce, and we've got the application running uh, inside of the Universal Control Plane as part of the Docker Swarm. Um, so that was kind of a, a comprehensive example of using Docker Data Center, uh, both the Trusted Registry and Universal Control Plane, uh, using a continuous integration and continuous deployment scenario. Um, you'll notice we, we definitely touched on a lot of things here. Um, and uh, the nice thing about Docker Data Center is it takes care of a lot of the, the typical things you would, you would run into when you're running Docker at scale, right? Um, how do I actually authenticate to this form? How do I actually store the images? Um, uh, what do I do to manage the actual Swarm cluster? So uh, all of those things are actually taking care of you. Uh, and we built the, uh, the actual Docker Data Center in a, a very highly available architecture. So uh, we, we can run up to uh, as many nodes as you want in HA mode uh, to load balance all the requests. And we can still uh, uh, run that infrastructure to get your application up and running. Uh, so that was kind of, uh, um, hopefully that makes sense to you guys. Um, I, I wanted to make sure you guys have time to ask me questions, but um, hopefully by just looking at how this, this works in, pr in practice, you guys can understand how to use this um, inside of your environment today. Thank awesome. you. David, thanks so much for that demo. I appreciate it. Um, I just have maybe one or two more slides I want to show as folks uh, begin asking their questions, and we can go and see if uh, there's any that we can tackle before the end of the demo. So I'll share my screen one more time. Um, so one of the questions that's kind of the next logical progression is, you know, how do you actually get access to Docker Data Center? Uh, so we sell Docker Data Center as a subscription, right? So you're getting a bundle of solutions and there's two different versions. Um, there's Business Day and there's Business Critical. All right, so Business Day 
uh, is from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. local time in terms of support levels for the service level and grievance. Uh, business critical is 24-7, 365. Um, in both cases, um, it's priced based on node, right? So price per node. Uh, and a node is anything with the Docker engine installed on it, right? So that's going to be one of three things, right? It's going to be um, a, cloud, um, a cloud instance. It's going to be a bare metal server. It's going to be a virtual machine. All right, so think about the amount of uh, VMs or servers or cloud instances that you're trying to dockerize, and it's essentially a one-to-one -one ratio in terms of engine to node in terms of pricing. All right, so for each bundle, you're getting um, the management layer, which is universal control plane. Uh, you're getting the registry, which is how you actually store and secure image content. Again, these are both the things that David just showed. And uh, the commercially supported Docker engine as well. Um, so this is like the patches and the hot fixes the bug fixes, fixes and support for previous updates of the engine itself. Also, it'll come with embedded Swarm, right? The orchestration solution within that. Um, talk about some of the value here. What you're getting is not only those three aspects of it, but you're getting integrations as well as the API support for all the existing Docker APIs, um, as well as uh, the validated configurations. Right? So you're getting access to um, the Docker team, so you have influence on the actual roadmap. Uh, this is from a single vendor. Right? This is all Docker native um, technology, right? So it's built for Docker by Docker at agreed upon SLAs. And just a quick look at some of the other users of Docker Data Center today. So with that being said, I want to thank all of you. I want to thank David as well for taking us through the demo. And we'll take a quick look at um, any of the questions that we might I've gotten from the audience. Let me take a look. Um, okay. So there's a couple that have come in here. Let's see. Uh, will Notary ever be fully integrated to DTR out of the box? So David, if you feel like taking that question, let me know, I can handle it if you like. I can take this question. Sure. All right. So basically, the, the, the current state of, of, of DTR um, actually has Notary as an experimental feature. And so Notary is itself a, a project that we started on. Um, and uh, what, it, what we don't have today is, is a, a Notary server that's actually integrated into Docker Data, Docker Data Center natively. And that's also, that's also running in an HA mode environment. So, uh, we, we are actually working on a new release at the moment, and um, I'm actually part of a, a, a workshop internally here at Docker to, to get the, the next version of Docker ready uh, for beta. And that version will have the uh, notary server embedded into Docker UC as well as Docker to registry, and it's going to run it in an HA mode environment. So uh, that, that means uh, if one notary server goes down, you can still have uh, the others serve up in the actual signing of those images. And the cool thing about the upcoming version of Docker Data Center uh, with Notary is that we can also import what's called um, uh, workflow policy so that uh, inside of UCP, um, if an image is signed uh, by specific organizations, you can enforce that policy so that, uh, like maybe your dev test and production uh, organization sign an image before it's actually running inside of the engine. So that, that that's a workflow that we can enforce, and that's uh, that's coming. Thanks, David. There's a couple other questions. So uh, where can we get the slide deck? So I can send out the re full recording of this um, presentation um, within the next few days, so you all have access to uh, this content as well. Um, one question that we got about the Git repo, David, is, uh, the Git repo that was shown that Jenkins is pulling code from, is it a public repo that folks can try, or is this a private one? Yeah, so it is, it is public. Uh, um, the, the repo that it had is is running as part of my own specific repository, so um, I can share that to you guys across um, the webinar. Um, and so, yeah, that's basically where I built my own application, and um, I, I go ahead and use the Docker components with my application. Um, so, yeah, we'll go ahead and, and share that with you guys. Sweet. Thank you. Um, next question we got was um, from Vijay. 
was the Docker data center running on an on-prem infrastructure or cloud vendor? So um, Docker data center deploys on-prem. Now the engine itself and the application, or the tool itself can run in any environment, right? So it can run within the cloud service provider, within a virtual machine, or on a bare metal server as well. Hopefully that answers that question. Um, let's see. Um, do I understand correctly that the Docker host is provided as part of the Docker data center? Absolutely. The engine is itself, right? We call it the commercially supported Docker engine, is part of the Docker data center solution. Uh, there's a question around um, does DDC use 1.11 and Docker Compose and not 1.12 with DAB? And I think David addressed that, the fact that um, DDC will be running on 1.12, which will include the DAB file as well. Um, and that there's a beta program that will be rolled out shortly. Um, let's see. Um, so there's a question. Hi, David. Thanks for the demo. We're already using DDC. Uh, when will DDC be released for Docker 1.12? Um, it's coming soon. It'll be within the next few weeks. Um, David, I don't know if there's more you want to share there. But. Yeah, so if you are an existing customer, I, I actually suggest that you reach out to your account manager uh, so that they can actually um, give you guys priority in terms of the, the people that will be given access to the beta. Uh, the, we're running the beta in a couple of phases. We're running a private beta uh, for a select few customers first, and then we're running a public beta so that we'll give you guys access to uh, the bits to install DDC for 112. Um, the GA date is still in flux. Uh, we're, we're assuming it's going to happen sometime next quarter, so uh, probably early next quarter. Um, yeah, we're running through uh, right now. Um, the, the actual preview beta release today internally uh, to determine what those dates might be. Awesome, thank you. Um, another question we got was, and I'll, and I'll take this, David, and I know there's a couple others that I'll ask you in one second. Um, so this question is, is there a de other deployment solution or product recommended by Docker for like a DevOps view? And I, I'm guessing when you say DevOps, it's from a GUI standpoint. Uh, our recommendation, obviously, is, is the universal control plane, right? It's a Docker-native solution that deploys on-prem. It's integrated with Docker Trusted Registry and the TS Engine, and you can utilize all the existing APIs. One thing I do want you to be aware of is there are other solutions out there that say they manage Docker containers, and they might, but be careful around, because uh, some might not be able to leverage all the existing APIs that your developers are looking to leverage, right? It might be a subset of the commands. It might be a subset of the APIs, and I just want to make sure you're aware of that. Right, when you're not looking at something that's truly Docker native, you might run into that issue with something to look at. But our recommendation in terms of deploying containers, Docker containers is universal control plan, which is the management layer of Docker data center. Um, so David, here's a question for you. Uh, it's from Jonathan Sun, just came in uh, a couple minutes ago. Um, sure. If we have two applications running, how does app one find and communicate app two? If we deploy them through UCP separately as the server may change randomly? Yeah, that's a great question. So uh, in effect, what you'll have to do is create what's called a Docker network, mm -hmm. and that Docker network will be defined inside of UCP. Um, and every time you run in a container, uh, the container has an option to, def to actually define which network it's going to use for communication. So uh, I would suggest using an overlay network to create that, and then when you define Docker, you actually run the container with Docker run, uh, specify that, that network through the network uh, flag, and that way you can actually run them and they will communicate to each other across multiple hosts. Sweet, thank you, David. Um, another question we got, and I'll direct this to you, is um, what component monitors the health check um, inside the container? Yeah, so the health check is actually a new feature that was released as part of Docker Engine 112. Um, the purpose of that was to basically allow you um, to, to actually create your own rules on, on what a healthy application or container should be. Um, so you actually define health checks inside of the uh, inside of the Docker file, right? Um, and you would you would point that health check to maybe a script that will then run inside of the container, and so you you get to define what a healthy container is. Um, and uh, we actually are going to roll that into also the next version of Docker Data Center so it can be more 
um, visible inside of your application. And the uh, purpose of that also will, will then uh, be to later on uh, when people start to do more interesting things like auto-scaling, uh, using the health check, we can then uh, determine if containers should be auto-scaled or not, right? Uh, and that's kind of a cool uh, consequence of having that inside of your Docker file. Awesome, thank you. Um, and I know there's a question, are there any auto-scaling features available? I think David just addressed that, that we're we building the auto-scaling yeah. into that. Um, and that was a follow-up to the previous question to that. Um, so another question for Vijay, is Jenkins using the Docker plugins for Docker, for doing Docker image builds and deploy to Swarm? So you have you have two options, right? Uh, the first option is to use the uh, the plugins that are available to you inside of Jenkins. Uh, the one I actually use um, is, I, I actually use uh, just a Docker client that's, that comes with Jenkins and I, I use that to uh, for doing all the builds and all the pushes. Um, I don't use a, a plugin per se um, because I just want to use commands. And so that's the other option that you can actually pursue is, is just use Docker native commands uh, without having to do a plugin. Sweet. Um, I don't know if you know the answer to this one. I know I myself don't know the answer to this one, but um, what are the future plans for, or are there any future plans for shippable integration? I don't know that, that answer to that question. So. Um, I probably have to defer that to someone else, um, but I, I assume it's probably a CI tool uh, that's out there. No worries. And I think this is a good point to wrap things up. I think we got through maybe 80, 90 percent of the, the questions themselves. If we didn't follow up, um, we'll be sure to reach out to you, or you can always reach out to myself or David as well. Um, I appreciate all of you for being here. I know we had those issues earlier with the confirmation emails. Uh, not going out in time, but all of you jumped on here and, and we're willing to listen. We truly appreciate that. Um, and David, I, of course, appreciate you being here and taking everyone through the demo and taking on some of these questions, man. No worries. Yeah. All right, Thanks, well, guys. We appreciate it and look forward to having you join our future webinars. Thank you. Bye. All right. Cheers. Bye -bye. Cheers. Bye -bye.